Hey, it's Jeff Sanders, and this episode this week is going to be a little bit different. Uh, yes, this is episode 457, and it's one that <laughs> I'm actually recording uh, from my home office. Things there are normal, uh, except that I have been experiencing dramatic amounts of illness. Uh, my lovely daughter, Rosie, who is in daycare, uh, tends to bring home more germs than my body knows what to do with. <laughs> so uh, as a podcaster, voice actor, public speaker, I spend as much time as possible on the microphone. That doesn't work very well if you can't breathe, can't speak, can't function. So, having said that, I would love to talk to you this week about systematizing your healthiest habits. Essentially, how to automate your best self. That's the topic this week, which seems hysterical to me because I wrote this script before I got sick. And now that I am sort of in recovery from that, and I'm in the middle of this process of trying to improve what I'm doing, this is the best topic. When you're struggling, it's the best time to figure out how to not struggle, and it's also the best time to make a plan for how to optimize your life when things are good and when things are not as good. So let's get to that this week. This is the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast, episode number 457, Systematize Your Healthy Habits, How to Automate Your Best Self. Good morning and welcome to the 5 a.m. Miracle. I am Jeff Sanders and this is the podcast dedicated to dominating your day before breakfast. My goal is to help you bounce out of bed with enthusiasm, create powerful lifelong habits, and tackle your grandest goals with extraordinary energy. In the episode this week, I'll break down why many habits never stick, how you can solidify healthy habits for life, and why automation is the key to guaranteeing the results that you want. Let's get to it. Your best habits are the healthy and productive ones that you do not have to think about. Now, what if your best and healthiest self could just go on autopilot? What's possible for your life if that is true? Now, you already have hundreds or even thousands of tiny habits that you do without thinking. But how many of those are actually helping you? As compared to how many of those are holding you back? What if you could set up a system that could bolster the benefits while minimizing the mistakes? This week, we're going to talk about healthy habits, why some work, why some don't, and what you can do to rebuild an ideal day that is filled with your best habits that you won't have to consciously think about ever again. You're going to want to, but you're not going to have to. (laughs) So what I just said at the top of this segment was that your best habits are the healthy and productive ones that you're not consciously thinking of. From my perspective as the host of this podcast, which focuses on healthy habits, personal developments, productivity, When I'm thinking about the best kind of habits, the habits that will change your life for the future, the ones that will not only prevent mistakes, not only prevent worst case scenarios, but the kinds of habits that move you forward, that cause progress and goals to be achieved. I'm thinking through the lens of habits that do two things. They make you healthier and more productive. I always use that lens because what I have seen, and I've discussed this in this podcast before in in great detail. I have a health-first approach to productivity, and the way that I view ambitious goals, the way that I view wanting to achieve bigger and better things is that all of those things are possible. Your biggest fantasies, your bucket list goals, the biggest and best parts of your life are all possible when you are healthy. And when you're not, as I have experienced very acutely in the last couple of weeks, it is so difficult, if not impossible, to do the things that you have planned to do. And so from my perspective, which has not only evolved over the years, but really doubled down on this aspect, the healthier you are, the more vibrant you feel, the more energy you have, the more enthusiasm you have, the more you're able to wake up and literally bounce out of bed with enthusiasm. The more often that's true for you, the more often productivity is a no-brainer. You can't even imagine the amount you can get done when you just feel fantastic all day, every day. You know, what's funny about that is that years ago, I had this perspective on productivity, which was basically, I didn't care about filtering the priorities. 
I didn't care about deciding which task was more important than another because it didn't matter. I was going to do all of them. My checklist could be a thousand miles long, and I was so filled with just this boundless energy and desire to do stuff that I would do it all and more. The list could be as long as possible. I was going to get all of it done regardless. No, that was my past life. (laughs) It's not my life today uh, by any means, but it does carry over, at least for me, from the mental side, the, uh, the way that I think about these things and the way that I apply that to my life today where I have stronger boundaries. Yes, I have two kids. Yes, I have a business and a wife and a house and a life that I'm trying to build here. But all of those things ultimately become these filters for me to have to redefine what an ideal day looks like, what a productive day looks like. And your life will have similar boundaries, similar uh, objectives and you know, requirements and you know similar responsibilities that you want to attend to. But on top of just being responsible, you have goals. You have things you want that go beyond just daily survival, daily objectives being met. Like That's nice and good to be done. It's responsible. But you want more. I know you do because you're listening to this podcast. And this podcast is all about making sure that your life has more value than just basic survival. For your best habits to shine through the healthy ones, the productive ones, the ones that push you forward to achieve your best goals. You're going to want to filter what you're doing, right? I just mentioned this idea that I used to do a thousand things in a day and was totally fine with it. My life today is more filtered. I do know which tasks are important and which ones are not. I do spend my time on things that matter and I ignore things that don't. And I do so now at a higher level because I am forced to. Right, The boundaries I have in my life force that kind of filtering. What that means is the habits that I'm choosing have to fit in those same filters, have to fit in the life that I am building. So the best habits that come through are the ones that fit my current life. They fit my current calendar, my current goals, my current life structure, family structure, career structure, all of those things that will dictate what a best version looks like, an ideal looks like. Your ideal, your best self, your best habits will be different than mine, and they will be different with each and every season that you have in your life. These things will shift over time, and so the way that I tend to view habits is that they're not actually lifelong. They're not forever, right? No habit is actually going to last forever. They're all going to end at some point. The season that you're in now will come to an end. A new one will begin, and when it does so, New habits will be part of that season. And ultimately, those habits will be the bedrock, the foundation of whether or not that season is successful or not. You know, the way I view habits is that they are integrally tied to your ultimate success. Your habits will make or break your results. Your habits are you, what you think about, what you do, the results that you achieve because of those things. They're all tied together. And habits, the repeated actions, that's everything. So now let's shift gears just a bit and discuss habits, not from the perspective of wanting to achieve big goals, but the opposite, which is why habits are failing you, why some of your habits don't actually stick and ultimately fall apart. Reason number one is you may be relying on the wrong rationale or reason for the habits you are pursuing. Uh, This is also known as you need a why that actually resonates with you and that can be called upon when you want to resist the new habits. I'll give you a good example here. Uh, This is one that has been popular in this podcast in the past, uh, but I have not discussed it in great detail recently, which is that about 12 years ago now, I radically changed my diet, and I moved to a plant-based diet, a vegan diet that dominated my personal life for a long time as I dove into nutrition and the best healthy habits and ones that led to me running marathons and ultra marathons. But one of the things that stuck with me ever since the last 12 years that I've really been committed to a plant-based diet is the rationale behind it. The reason that I went vegan in the first place is the reason I'm still vegan today and the reason I'll still be a vegan in 10 years from now. And it's not because I have some sort of high moral perspective on life. It's because when I first decided to change my life, I did so for a why, a reason that was so strong for me, so powerful for me personally, 
that when I was tempted to not follow my new goal, tempted to stray from the objectives I had set for myself, the boundaries I put in place, I reverted back to that why and reminded myself, hey, Jeff, you made this choice for a reason. This habit that you have put in place is there because you chose for it to be there and it matters to you and it matters to others as well. And so my point here is that when you choose a habit, regardless of what it is, whether it's for your health, for your business, for your family, if the reason that you choose that habit is not powerful for you personally, if it's powerful for someone else, some guy in a podcast perhaps, well, it's not going to last for you. It's not going to work for you because it doesn't matter to you. The rationale behind your choices are emotional, right? This is not logic. I would love to say this is a logical thing. You build an ideal calendar. You have these ducks in a row and everything works out beautifully because you plan for it to work out on paper. You know, I've written entire books about this kind of topic. I love to map things out on paper and, and have a structured plan for these things that are logical and analytical and methodical. But that's not how human behavior works. We are emotional creatures. If the rationale behind your habit is weak for you, the habit is doomed to fail. That's it. But if the emotion is strong, if the rationale is tied to something you deeply care about, the thing you want to be true about your life, I guarantee you will be true. The thing you want will happen. It won't be a matter of if, but when. Whether it's you're trying to pursue more money for your business or a better family life or a better health for yourself because you want to feel fantastic and lose weight, it doesn't matter the thing. None of that matters. The reason behind all of it is what matters. The why is everything here. Number two, why habits fail. You may be relying on discipline, willpower, or motivation. You know, I've discussed this before in this podcast as well, but I want to hit this point again now, mostly because this is the most common next step. Discipline and willpower and even motivation itself are all fleeting emotions. They come and go as the wind blows, right? You're not going to get the thing you want when you don't feel great. You're not going to get the desire to go work out when you're tired. You're not going to want to stick to your diet when there's a donut in front of you and you haven't slept well today. Right, We're not going to be able to rely on these things because we don't have those things all the time. You will have your why all the time. You'll have your rationale for why you made that choice with you 24-7. But you will not have the discipline or the willpower or motivation 24-7. Those things are fleeting. Ultimately, the actions you take will build motivation. The choices you make will, will build these things up and you can't improve. Discipline and willpower. These things can be improved over time because you are working on them actively, but they're still never going to be there for you all the time. They're always going to be a depleting resource. And if you rely on those for your most important habits, you're taking a pretty big risk. Now, you're still going to use discipline and willpower motivation uh, to your advantage when it works for you. Yes, they're still very helpful and necessary components but they can't be the foundation. They're more like the icing on the cake. They're not the cake itself. The cake is the why. And the why might tell you to not eat cake, but that's a different story. (laughs) Number three, and why your habits may not work for you, is you chose the wrong ones. You know, not every habit is meant for you. Just because, once again, some guy in a podcast does something does not mean you need to also do that thing. You know, I'm very passionate about my plant-based diet. I am very passionate about the fact that I went vegan 12 years ago. And you may not share that passion. You may not care whatsoever about any of those things. Not every habit is meant for you. Now, I would hope you would like to go plant-based, but we can discuss that later on. Habits are personal. They're customized for you, by you, for reasons you choose. They're great when you choose them for the right reasons, And they really are frustrating when you don't. So when you choose habits, we're not just looking for, yes, a powerful emotional why to go do something. We're also looking for the practical application of doing the thing every day that you can actually do, that it's sustainable, it's practical, it's implementable in your life as it is today. Because having a good reason for doing something doesn't mean you can practically do it. You could be really passionate about something, but it doesn't work with your life. So it won't happen there either. 
there's a few kind of required elements here. And so when you choose your habits, you've got to run it through this, this gauntlet of filters, right? Do you care about it? Is it practical? Will it produce the results you want? And this is why choosing the right habits and going through this process to think these things through is so important because when you do this kind of work, and it is work up front, the end result is a daily rhythm that is so beautiful. You get the results you want because you're doing the things that matter. You're doing the things you care about. It all fits together because you did the upfront work to make sure it was going to work for you. Reason number four why your habits may fail you is you never plan for the obvious obstacles. You know, habits always work really well on day one. (laughs) This is just how habits work. Day one, there is a ton of motivation. There's a ton of discipline, willpower. The why is strong. Everyone feels great. It's a big party. Day one of new habits, always awesome, always successful. Day two, no. (laughs) Day two is bad. People don't like day two. Because day two requires you to do day one again. And that's where these things fail. There are obvious obstacles in habit building, habit forming, um, habit execution and success. Uh, One of those obvious obstacles is the fact that a habit is a repeated task. It's not a one-off event. You have to plan for these things if you expect these things to work. I'll give a a good example here in the world of podcasting. Um, I met a guy at a conference. This is probably four or five years ago now who, when I met him, I told him about my show, and he said, oh, you're a podcaster too. I just started a podcast last week. I was like, oh, great. Uh, What's the show about? And he was telling me the show was about this big business he was going to build, and his podcast was a daily show to present his new business to the world, and he was going to be helpful every single day on his show by releasing a new episode every single day indefinitely. I just looked at him, and I laughed, and I was like, I'm so sorry for you. (laughs) He was like, sorry for me. I was like, yeah, I'm sorry that your goal is not going to work out for you. And he was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I can already see your goal failing. I already know it's not going to work. I can already guarantee you without any question in my mind that this daily podcast of yours is doomed. And six weeks later, his show ended. Like I I saw it coming and I saw it it coming because these are obvious failure points, right? Points of failure where you just say, I see what you're trying to do and it's noble. It's ambitious. It's amazing. It won't work. If you push the boundaries too far, it won't work if there are obvious obstacles in place. Now, I use the example of a daily podcast guaranteeing to fail um, as an extreme example, but it's not that extreme. People want to do goals every single day, habits every single day, so they get the streak. The uninterrupted streak of 30 days, 90 days, a whole year, 20 years, whatever the case is. You know, I just said before that I've been a vegan for 12 years. That doesn't mean that my diet has been perfect every single day for 12 years. No, that's not the goal. Perfection is not what this is about. This is about building strong habits that make you a better you with the obviousness that we are human We're going to screw some things up occasionally, and there are predictable obstacles that come along in this path that we can work around before they get there and prevent the worst case scenario. So as much as I would want to say, yes, go out into the world and and have these perfect uninterrupted streaks, uh, your daily podcast for the next indefinite amount of years, we all know that's not real and that plenty of those goals will have hiccups and mistakes and failure points, and that's fine. It's okay to say in this process, we're going to be human. We're going to kind of get messy and a little sloppy sometimes, but the, the mission hasn't changed. This goal of ours to improve ourselves, to build better habits, to continue to fight, to stand back up when we get knocked down, like that's what this journey is. And it is a journey. Great habits are not built overnight and great habits don't last forever. This is an ongoing renewal process that will continue every season of your life to then have the chance to start again and be better the next time around. 
And the fifth and final reason why your habits may not actually stick at all is that you just push too hard, too fast, too early. Now, I just kind of hit on this point before with this guy who had a daily podcast that didn't work, and it really didn't work primarily because it was too much, too fast. You know, habits themselves are best when they are long-term actions. We want to move quickly in the beginning. We want to put in lots of that motivation and discipline and willpower on day one just to exhaust ourselves and fail on day two. But if you take a slower approach and really embrace the idea that habits are long-term and that if you move too fast, you will get injured, you will break a bone, you will fail yourself in some way, the system will break down because the speed was a problem. It was a risk to take. We want to create sustainability here, a system you can do not just today, not just in a week or a year, but in 50 years. And if your habit isn't one that could be around for decades to come, it may not be the best habit. There may be some extra energy you've applied to it that won't work for you long term. Now, it doesn't mean every habit should be super easy to the point that's not actually going to benefit you. There's a healthy balance to strike here, right? Not every goal has to last 50 years either. But with the intention behind it, that if your habits are designed at their core to be habits, which means they're habitual, which means they're repeatable, which means you're still doing them a while from now, it means the pace matters. I'll give another example here from the world of health and fitness. You know, I've run a lot of marathons in the past, and one of the things that you see right away with new runners uh, on race day, especially, right? You go to a marathon in a big city, and there's tens of thousands of runners. And what will happen is they'll, you know, they'll shoot the gun off at the beginning of the start line. All these runners will take off and their initial pace when they're running way too fast. I'm talking, they're just booking it. They're doing seven minute mile, six minute mile paces, but they're not runners who do six minute miles. They're 10 minute mile runners or 12 minute mile runners and they're running way too fast. So what happens Well, they get tired, they fall over, they pass out, they break an ankle, right? They eventually realize, wait a minute, this isn't going to work. No, no, not everyone breaks an ankle, but to the point that they pushed so hard in the beginning, the pace was so unsustainable that they had no choice but to slow down, to walk, to get water, to then realize, oh my gosh, I'm now behind schedule of what I had planned to do because I pushed so hard and slowed down so much. And there becomes this ridiculous struggle to figure out how to get back on pace to even finish the race at all, let alone at the time you had planned for. That's what habits are. These longer term marathons and ultra marathons that we're on where the pace has to match the distance you plan to travel. And if you don't pace yourself appropriately, these habits won't just fail. They're going to fail in a glorious fashion, right? You will be the guy who passes out at the marathon. Don't be that guy. All right, now I want to shift gears into the better part of the discussion on habits. We just discussed how to fail at habits miserably. Uh, Let's now discuss how you can systematize and solidify your healthy and productive habits for the rest of your life. Number one is identify the habits you actually want to change. Uh, This could be bad habits you want to eliminate. It could be good habits you want to add, uh, results that are specific you want to look for, really just asking the question, where do you see yourself in a year and what would it take to get you there? You know, I love to play this game. I I love the game of brainstorming what's possible for me now. What could be possible for me in the next season? Not just looking at, well, here's how my life has struggled and here's where I'm miserable and here's why things are bad. We all can do that all day long, right? But playing the victim and being exhausted by all of the bad things in your life ultimately just exhausts you. It exhausts me to think about. I had this experience just recently where I caught myself in the middle of the thought process where I realized all I'm thinking about is why this next goal is going to fail and why this you know, current season I'm in is, is worse than it should be. Like these negative thoughts that were just reinforcing more negativity. And when I caught myself in that thought process, I realized, well, wait a minute, I need to flip the script. I want to look for change I can make that will add to the things that I want, that will bring about more of who I want to be, that will let the results I'm looking for actually flourish and not just play the victim or feel as though everything is bad, even if it is, even if if you're struggling and you're just saying, well, wait a minute, reality is not good for me right now. Okay, we can start there. 
But then the pattern has to shift. The thought process has to shift to here are the things I want to change. Here are the habits I want to see. Here are the good things I am not just hoping for, but actively going to be working towards. That's when it changes in the frame of your mind for the kinds of habits that will make a difference because you're excited about the change. You're literally enthusiastic about the results. And if you don't feel emotionally tied to that end result, if you're not literally excited about it, it could just mean you're too tired and stressed right now, or it could mean you chose the wrong goal. But either way, we're looking for something that just pulls you out of bed and says, this, this thing right here, that's what I want. Number two, we want to identify these specific habits we're trying to add in at a level of specificity that you may not have had before. First of all, I want to give myself a pat on the back for saying specificity without screwing it up. (laughs) Secondly, we're looking for habits that are specific. And I say that because when we're talking about the kinds of habits we're going to be doing literally every day, it's not just something generic, right? We're not looking for a path forward where we're going to be healthier every day or more productive every day. Those generic statements will be applied retroactively after the fact. But going forward, Day to day, on a literally tomorrow morning, what are you going to do? Well, that action you're going to take will be specific. You're not just going to have a smoothie, for example, or go for a run. Your smoothie will have very specific ingredients. There's a recipe for it. You're not just going to go for a run. You're going to go for a run in a certain location, for a certain distance, for a certain amount of time. That level of detail matters. So as you identify not just the results you want or the general habits to get you there, but the specific tiny actions you will take, this is where the excitement for me really kicks in because I can practically see me changing. I can practically see the calendar improving. I can see what I will actively be doing that's going to change my life. So the easiest and best path forward here is to consciously think about not just what you want or what you're trying to avoid, but specifically how you're going to get there. Which brings us to step number three, which is to set it and forget it. This is automation. And automation is going to be your absolute best friend because it's going to take these habits from something you're consciously working on, thinking about, planning for, and really tweaking and optimizing to a habit that's a no-brainer, right? That's the goal. And when you are not thinking anymore and you're just doing, and you're and that's, and that's a good thing, right? Not thinking about the good habit you're doing, then you save time, you save energy, you save money, you save stress. You save all of those things you've been losing or gaining in the wrong possible combination, right? Automation makes your life easier, faster, smoother. Uh, It sets the wheels in motion, optimizes things, and then lets them run off and then they just work just by themselves in a beautiful way. Uh, Let's go back to that example of your morning smoothie with the recipe that you would set. Up front, you may ask the question, well, what's in this smoothie? What kinds of ingredients? How much water? How much ice? How much fruits? How how much veggies? Like, What's in this thing? Well, once you've made those choices and you've bought your nice Vitamix blender and you've put all these ingredients together and you've done it once and then twice and then 10 times and then 100 times, a couple of months from now, you're going to wake up, make a smoothie and go on with your day and you're not going to think about it. You're just going to do it, and that smoothie is going to be extremely healthy, and you're going to get the nutrients you want, and the energy, and the hydration, and all of those things you want from that smoothie you have received without thinking. It just happened. This is the beauty of automation. This is the beauty of habits that are ingrained for the right reasons, for the right results, because you crafted them, you made these choices, And then a few months from now, they're a non-starter in terms of difficulty. They just are easy. You just do them. And that's it. And then all of a sudden, the results that you would expect to get, they show up without you really thinking it was hard to get there. To clarify this a little more, let's imagine someone who has lost a lot of weight in the last year. And you may ask this person, well, how did you go on this journey of weight loss? How did you go on this journey of, of fitness and health improvement? 
And they may tell you, well, you know, in the beginning, I had to learn a lot of new things, read a lot of new books, try a lot of diets, and really go through a challenge. But then I got to a point where I made enough decisions, and it just became second nature. And now I just live this life and eat the foods that I eat and do the things I do, and I feel good, I look good, things are good. But that's it. But you get to a point where the hard work in the beginning is, is gone. And the automation has kicked in, the habits have kicked in, the lifestyle has kicked in. And the beauty and the smoothness and the efficiency, it's all just there. That's what setting it and forgetting it means. The, the set it part is the hard work up front. The forget it part is the easy part in the end. And the journey to get there is a journey. But this whole process results in you getting to a point where automation is just how you function. And we know this is true because you already have habits in your life that are already working for you. You also have habits that are working against you. But either way, those things took time to come to fruition. And this next step to set these processes in motion and then be able to forget them down the road, it's a really cool process to go through, especially when you get results you want. So yes, there is a little bit of work involved up front, but it does get easier. Now to build this system, what needs to be true for your new habit to be guaranteed a place in your life right now? When you're going to build something new, you're going to want to know right off the bat that there is a guarantee of a location, a guarantee of time, a guarantee of a place in your life. And I say this specifically because oftentimes we want to add in things that are new. We want to build a new system, have a new habit, run a new marathon, build a new business, do something grand and ambitious. But there's no space in our life to do these things. We have to ask the question, what needs to be true for your new habit to have a guaranteed place? And what that really is asking, the subtext there is, what are you going to cut? What are you going to get rid of? How can you make space for this new thing? Because I guarantee you, just adding in more will just make you tired. <laughs> It'll just make your calendar more filled. And that's not going to lead to the results you want. Pretty good chance it's going to work against you. So. The first thing to do for this new system to have a guaranteed place is we let go of what we can. And then we ask the questions like, what kinds of resources will we need for this new system? What should our calendar be optimized for to guarantee the time we need? Who else needs to know about this new habit in case you're, it involves your family or involves your friends or involves your coworkers? And then if you want to go even further, what kinds of other smaller habits can you tack on to this initial one to optimize this core habit even more? All of this to say that there are a lot of questions to answer, to build and optimize a new habit and a new system, and to get that to a place of automation. But for any of this to be true, we're going to need some space in our lives, space on our calendars, space emotionally and cognitively to think about these things. But then when you have a little bit of room and you use that time available, you can do some really cool things. Now, step number four with this new habit, this new system you're building, we're going to want to do some experiments. We're going to need to test this new theory because any new habit is going to need some optimization. And the best way to find out, is this habit really for me? Is this habit going to work? We're going to have to test and find out. And the best test is just execution. It's doing the thing, taking some notes, and then trying it again tomorrow a little bit more intelligently. So you do the habit, you see what happens, and you just ask that question. Did it work? Did it not work? And why? Then you tweak, you optimize, and the next day it's a little better, little better, and a little bit better. I talked to my wife recently about exercise, and she was asking me about marathon running and trying to restart a fitness habit. And she was asking me, well, how do I begin on day one? Because I haven't been running. I want to get back to doing things that are physical again. What does day one look like? Because I don't want to injure myself. I don't want to you know, push too hard, but I don't want to also do nothing. Like, what does day one even look like on this new system? How do I test this theory? And the only answer I could give her is the one that worked for me many years ago, which was do anything. Just move. Walk for five minutes around the block. Like, get out there and try anything. And then take that information and try again the next day a little bit smarter. Tweak it optimize it, and continue. Starting is the thing here. Doing is the thing. 
what tends to happen is if we have that kind of question, like what does day one look like, and we can't find an answer we like, we do nothing. There is no testing. There is no experimentation. There is no optimization because it never happened. Nothing took place. (laughs) These habits will never be better in 90 days or two years or whatever if day one was never realized. It was just delayed. It was just procrastinated. It was just put off indefinitely. So if you have a habit you really want to test and experiment with and optimize, day one matters. And make day one today if you can. Uh, But if not, don't let day one just continue to be rescheduled because it's never going to work that way. And the fifth and final way for you to systematize and solidify those healthy habits in your life is to review your major systems on a regular basis. So yes, you're going to do the daily optimization to tweak and perfect those habits and make sure they're better. But we're going to need a bigger picture review. Uh, If you've heard this podcast before, you know that I love a weekly review. I also do monthly reviews and quarterly reviews and annual reviews. I just I love to review what it is I'm doing because it helps to ensure that everything on the little day to day level is still aligning to the bigger picture level. Some habits in your life are not meant to last forever. Um, Other habits will need to evolve uh, month to month or season to season. And some habits are just boring and you're tired of them. You just need a new one uh, to be more enthusiastic about your progress and to actually make forward movement happen. So the review process is important to make sure that on a bigger picture level, you're hitting those goals that you really want to. So you can review and tweak and evolve and progress and do all of those things, not just in the tiny day-to-day movement, but the bigger picture stance as well. So reviews matter. So the way that I tend to to process this is to have a weekly review guaranteed in my calendar each Sunday morning, um, sometimes Sunday night, but either way, it's on Sunday, and that's when I review my week and make sure I'm ready for Monday morning because I want to make sure all my goals are aligned, the daily actions are aligned. And then once a month, I pause and look at those weekly reviews and ask the question, are those week-to-week movements actually making sense? Am I heading towards the goals I want in a bigger picture sense? And if I'm not, I tweak. And if I am, I may double down on those goals even more. It's just that question of, is this working? And the more often you're able to analyze and assess, the more often you will get to where you want to be faster and overcome obstacles more efficiently because you've done the work that allows you to intellectually, methodically move through this. And of course, emotionally, get yourself re-energized and re-excited because you can then see the future of these goals succeeding. That to me is where reviews really kick in. It's not just what happened before, but what's possible going forward. Once again, how can I see this through to a bigger level? How can this progress exponentially evolve? And reviews allow you to see that going forward. So I know I threw a lot at you this week, and I know the top of the show I said that I was sick and that this would somehow make the show less good. I still came at you with a lot of of intense energy. So I think the one thing I've noticed about myself that I have mentioned before on the podcast is that I really am excited about this stuff. I'm really passionate about progress and personal growth and habits and seeing goals realized, like that's what draws me out of bed in the morning is the ability to not only achieve them myself, but help others do the same thing. And even when I'm sick and even when I'm struggling and even when there's a difficulty in my life, when I think about what I care about, when I'm able to actively do the thing I'm excited about, it pulls me out of those difficult seasons. It pulls me out of that struggle. It, it lifts me above the day-to-day minutia and and problems. And this is helpful when you're thinking about your habits and your goals is what is that that kind of pulls you out of that funk, right? Like, yes, I may be sick and have to wait for my body to actually process the germs, but there's still a lot to be said about the emotional aspect of, of riding that wave and bringing yourself to a better place. Even if it may not be where you'd like to be, there's so much power in just thinking about and really spending time with those things that bring you joy, those things that raise your day's level, that increase the energy, increase the enthusiasm, increase the, you know, the, that forward motion that just fires you up. That's the good stuff, right? That's the best parts of life. 
So when you're building these habits and you're building this new life and you're trying to figure out where do I go next, lean back on those things that get you pumped up, right? Really rest your energy on the thing that builds more energy. That's where you're going to find the most enthusiasm, the most success, uh, the most forward potential, right? The thing that may be super exciting to you now means a lot because it's going to drag you forward through those days when times are tough. So think about that. Really make sure that that's a focus as you make these choices and choose goals you really love. And for the action step this week, pick one healthy habit to automate now. I actually recommend beginning with your sleeping patterns, specifically when you go to bed. If you're not there already, start going to bed earlier so you can get more rest, wake up even earlier, feeling even better, and then have the enthusiasm to go do the thing you want to do tomorrow morning. Solidify your sleep and move from there. JeffSanders.com slash 457 is the place to go for the episode notes. And of course, subscribe to this podcast in the app you're using right now or go to JeffSanders.com slash subscribe where you'll see other apps to choose from as well. That's all I've got for you here on the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast this week. Until next time, you have the power to change your life and the fun begins bright and early.